But my name is Patrick. I'm a life coach and a parenting coach from Scripture Union, Uganda. We will look at celebrating change, preparing for adolescence, what parents can give, the teens talk, and what parents can do, derived from our positive parenting materials. Parents of teenagers today are being offered plenty of advice from media, social workers, teachers, and counselors. Oftentimes, this barrage of information leaves us feeling confused and virtually guilty. We begin to think that everything is our fault, but there is always a few answers to that. The 21st century on traditional wisdom of child raising has not produced noticeably happier, kinder, and more balanced young people. Parents still struggle with the generation gap and they struggle with stereotypes. They are seen as irrelevant. Sometimes our children have seen us as old fashioned, out of touch, and these stereotypes are unhealthy. The key to preparation and enjoying young people is preparation at the earliest stage. From infancy, you are helping to build an adult, laying a solid foundation of love, of respect, of prayer, of worship, of togetherness, helping our children to form and hold on to right values. If you want your children to base their lives on biblical values during their teenage age, then you need to teach them to live out God's teaching clearly, and then they will already own them as values as they grow. As children grow up, they begin to think for themselves and less of our influence. By the time they are teens, much of our parenting is almost complete. Certainly, they may need guidance and support. By this time, much of their best beliefs are already in place as teenagers. Whatever standards and practices they have grown up with, these become the lens through which these children will view their world. Becoming a teenager is a milestone to be celebrated. In many African cultures, it is planned. It's a time away with teens to prepare them for life ahead. We see fathers going out, maybe to have a walk in the forest with their son and then the mother, taking a walk with her daughter just to speak about real life issues that make them men and women. Parents often feel uncomfortable about discussing sexual behavior. You may also feel that talking to our children about sex is not part of our African culture. The strange thing is that it does not seem to be part of any culture in the world. In most countries, parents struggle over this issue and many rely on someone else to do it, maybe relatives, teachers, and church leaders. As a parent, we have a God-given opportunity to our children to prepare them for adult life. This is a definition I can give for a teenager. A teenager is a teenager, on the way from 10 years old to child playful dependent to the 19 year old adult out in the world working and studying and making their own decision. It is a wonderful and exciting time as the whole world opens up with rich of opportunities and new ways to make life. But the change also comes with uncomfortability. Sadly, teenage years are, can be stressful, a period of one crisis to another. The pace of change leaves the whole world, world and the whole family bewildered and bruised. If you allow the recommendation of father and son or mother and daughter taking time out at the start of the teenage years, it will help you as your child begins to mature. Encourage your children to face their teenage years with confidence. Draw a parallel between the time of their birth, moving from the security of their mother's womb into the unfamiliar but much richer world outside, and the new opportunities now that await them. Sometimes you may stand back because you want your children to discover what they can manage, something new on their own. They may even think that you have deserted them. At other times, you may seem to interfere unnecessarily because you want to the best for them. Young adults are acutely fragile. They are vulnerable to practically everything, failure, criticism, embarrassment, parents' attitude, and most of all, to any form of rejection. Physically, teenagers are becoming aware of themselves as individuals, as different and separate. They need to think on their own 
and they have thoughts by themselves away from interference yet they want so much to belong to be accepted and to be part of the crowd they don't like to obey or blindly they ask questions and they demand the adults to give explanations this explains the reason why children question us the reason of faith why do we attend particular churches as they grow up this can be a difficult time for parents but it will not hurt us to be interrogated by our children if we are willingly honest to face their questions and open to change. Often their sincerity and zeal for truth can challenge us. Early pregnancy in girls can result in physical complication as well as social and emotional implications. Young people oftentimes tell each other that waiting for sex will harm them. This is not true in God's plan. Sexual intercourse is reversed, it is reserved for marriages. Your teenager will already have friends who are sexually immoral, and to this, help them to cope with the pressure. This helps encourage children to redirect their energy into other useful pursuits like sports, study, and hobbies. This is the best way to prepare adults, life, and parents can guide their children. Teenagers are faced with many challenges as well as changes. They begin to examine their self-image, their values, their aims, their attitudes. Here are two common questions that they may face. Who am I? My identity. What will I ever become? Asking for purpose. As young people meet changes, new challenges, they struggle to establish their own independence. This is often leads to confrontation with parents who do not know how to cope with the demands of teenagers. Many parents feel that they need to draw up stricter rules to try to control behavior and be firm on discipline with their teenagers. Parents should, not, parents should resolve not to take the bait and allow themselves to get drawn into argument with teenagers. Begin by asking questions that will reveal what is going on in the young person's mind. Gather all facts before making rash, harsh judgments. Help teenagers to make good decisions for themselves instead of dictating them. Our children's first need is time more time and again time when they are teenagers their own schedule fill their days and we can feel that they are too grown up to need us too but they do need us we show we should show our teenagers unconditional love by our patience kindness trust and respect conditional love depends on other person pleasing us and doing exactly what we expect of them. True love, on the other hand, God's kind of love, focuses on the relationship and not on what the other person does. Romans 15, 7, accept one another just as Christ accepted you, accept these teenagers. This even applies to parents and children. Accept them the way they are without always wishing they were someone different. Like I wish they were like my neighbor's children. Don't compare your teens with any other person. They need freedom to be themselves. It is perfectly natural for our teenagers to want a great deal of freedom. God created us to be free and took incredible risks to give us that freedom. Often this Often those parents who cling on their children create a great insecurity in them and finally lose them. Those who are prepared to let them go and trust them actually keep them. Give too much rather than too little. If we believe in them, expect the best of them and allow them the space and the freedom to make mistakes. They will grow into responsible adults. It may seem like a contradiction but alongside with freedom, the adult needs structure. They need structures and firmness. Boundaries should be wide, but they should also be def definite. A well-balanced family is based on love rather than the rest of rules, behaves constant, consistently, characterized by unselfishness, considers each other's needs, communicates without sarcasm, protects family life, the rules of the game makes the game playable. The customs of a family make the family life livable. Give focused attention by spending time alone with one child. Go on shopping expedition on a business trip together. Stop at a cafe 
for a drink on your way home. Take a walk for a supper. Don't do all the talking. Allow the teen, allow time to be just quiet and let your teen get the space to speak. Ask questions, how, when, where, why. Chat about everyday issues. Young people are keen observers and hate hypocrisy. If we fail them in this area, they will look elsewhere for examples of how people relate to one another. Pop stars, sports personalities, actors, fashion leaders, rich, famous, are all ready to make the, uh, declarations about love, romance, and sex to our pe young people. We will explain to our children why their older brothers and sisters enjoy some freedoms and privileges. Grown children need to be patient with their young siblings who are still learning. Every member of family has to realize and know that their behavior affects everyone. As a parent, you can encourage cooperation, sharing, listening, tolerance, understanding, genuine interest in each other. Parents of this day and age have serious problems. In my eyes, they are either too overprotective or too prepared to give freedom. In the case of overprotecting, children become suffocated to do what they want, what they, they please until their parents give in. In the case of being too prepared to give freedom to children, begin to feel unloved and unwanted and they begin to take advantage of their parents. This is what teenagers say about their parents. If there were a competition for the best parents, my parents would take the cup every year. They are very sweet and kind and gentle, one child said. Some parents put their children through hell. They have to sit and listen to their parents fighting or their mother getting to be beaten for absolutely nothing. There is a tendency nowadays for parents to take out their financial problems, their menopause and midlife crisis on their children. Am I to blame that I didn't get your bonus this month? Am I to blame that you are at a critical stage in your life, a teenager asks. Some parents do not care what their children do. They can sneak out to parties, to disco, uh, to, to discos, get drunk, and the parents cannot care at all. One child said, my mother and I are very, are very special friends and have a special bond. We talk to each other every day about almost everything, things that most teenagers would not discuss with their parents. As I try to get deeper, building self-esteem, we want our children to, to, to love us. We also want them to believe that God created them in his image and loves them that they are people worth of value. This knowledge is vital and foundation if they are to grow up with confidence to be independent, strong, self-disciplined Christians. Teenagers have energy and a lot of it. It is time for fresh ideas, new projects, and exciting experiments and new plots. Teenagers have reached their exciting stage in their development, but there is still a long way to grow. The goal is still maturity and responsibility into adulthood. It is our task to help them prepare for the next stage in life. Young people are under great pressure at school. Studying is the key which opens the door for the future opportunities. Parents can provide much needed support during this time. Encourage diligence. By all means, do not add to the pressure your child already have at school. Teenagers are often asking for money but never seem to have any. This is a good time for them to begin to develop a right attitude about money and learn how to handle it. Discuss allowances and they should how they should be used. Teach them how to budget and how to save. Very few people survive the process of growing without crisis or problems. This can arise in any area at school or at home. As parents, we should know that our children are growing up to be others. Look out for early warnings and signs that something is going to go all wrong. Anything in our routine or normal behavior may signal difficulties. About addictions, all addictions have one thing in common. They function as an emotional atheistic. 
They serve to kill the pain of the unpleasant emotions and experiences. People resort to addictions to numb their pain as teenagers to escape the, from life's responsibilities. But the realities of life do not go away once you have numbed them. Stop the source of stimulation. It all goes back to the stake. Being a teenager means all sorts of embarrassing changes in their bodies. It is the age of aspiration and pimples. They are bewildered by the rate of their physical development and ensure how they cope. As parents, we have the responsibility to prepare them for this time. We also need to teach them how to care for their minds and emotions. So, so much of what comes out of them. The teenage years are often the time when childhood faith is challenged. The person discovers that not everyone believes in God and that there are choices. Your faith, no matter how strong, will no longer be enough. Young people must find God to be real and alive for themselves. Arguing is almost completely ineffective of getting people to change. Face up to the problems when parents try to avoid issues and neglect their responsibility. Encourage them to talk fast. <coughs> Many young people grow in dysfunctional families where adults fail to provide the emotional nourishment, love, discipline that their children need. Here are some guidelines for you. When you are annoyed or upset, use the I message better than attacking your child. I was worried instead of saying you don't care about anybody. Regular signs just set apart for the family to talk and listen to each other are useful to guard against business and tension in a home. Lead the discussion yourself until your children are ready to take responsibility. Allow your children to suggest areas of discussion prior to the gathering. Aim to meet at the same time. Brainstorm on important issues. Try to arrive at the agreed solution. Get commitments on future behavior. End with a great snack to show that you care. During teenage years, actions speak louder than words. Model integrity before them. Life as a parent is never dull or, un or predictable. You will always discover there will be a lot of fun right from a toddler to an 11 year old. As your children enter into teenage phase, the pace quickens and the challenges increase, determined to look forward with eager and anticipation rather than anxiety that they're becoming teenagers. How then can I cope and survive with the teenage years as they live through them? The key is to be positive and to enjoy it. Take time. One moment at a time and embrace all life's trials and adventures, knowing God's love is wider, deeper, higher, and the problems we can face are smaller. As I found the summary, give up the right to possess your children. Look only to God's good will, and you'll be able to raise good children. I hope you find it encouraging to raise terrific teenagers. This is Patrick, Scripture Union, Uganda. It was great to have you on our platform. God bless you.